hello guys welcome to my channel in this video i'll be going through a workflow on how you can retouch your images in capture one i will show you how easy it is to retouch skin in capture one don't forget to subscribe and show your support by hitting the like button now this is a raw image and so it is looking dull the colors are off let's start with this image the first thing i would do with the image is to increase my exposure I want the image to look very bright and airy and soft but I'm exposing the image just because I want to maintain a particular look which is a bright airy look. While exposing the image I watch the histogram to see where the levels are. Yes it's very high and it's my starting point to raise my exposure. I'm exposing a little more for the darker side of her face because I want it to have a bright airy feel in general so when I see that I'm okay with how exposed the dark the shadow side of her face is then I can now retrieve recover some details in the overexposed areas I'm just gonna add enough to recover highlights and still not clip looking at my histogram I still don't want it to clip it's not clipping so I'm fine so the next thing I would go into is checking the white balance I will select the white balance picker tool and just hit on it and everything becomes warm the image is a little too saturated and I'm going for a soft light look so I would take down the saturation a bit and now the image is looking a little better I'll take that down check on my contrast the contrast is it's a little less contrasty so I would increase contrast but I'm going for a particular look yeah, I want to make this a punchy look so I'll add contrast I like to use clarity when I'm trying to create contrast to an image because it works differently from the contrast but this image, I want it soft at the same time contrasty. And that's why I'm taking advantage of all these options I have here. Now the image is close to where I want it, but now it's too contrasty. So I'm going ahead to reduce my contrast a little bit and also mm, just recover i'll recover the highlights just enough to get it out of the clipping zone it's not really clipping there's there's good information in the highlight details but i want to be sure that it is safe for all maybe all screens and all printing purposes even though i'm not taking this for print but just want to make sure it's technically correct so right there I would like to have I'm okay with it there I need to enhance this look so this is the look with the clarity slider I like how contrasted the image is. I like how bright the brighter part of the image is. But I don't want the skin to be overly bright. Well, what I used to do to address this problem was to work with the Luma range. Creating a new field layer, I would select Luma range. Although there's a better way to doing it, but this Luma range is how I used to do it before. Where I go into Luma range, and then pull the information to towards the bright side towards the, the right side of this slider and then that captures all the bright parts of the image but now what i want to focus on is just her face i'm okay with the brightness of the background but i want her face so how would have how i would have done it before was just to pick the luma range here 
focus on the highlighted area of the image and while looking at the highlighted area i would now I make my adjustment and smoothing my adjustment out to cover the areas I want to have covered. I go over to the curve slider and then pull back the details. But what usually happens is that this affects the entire image and so I'll have to like mask again and pick my brush tool, my eraser tool, just erase maybe the magic eraser and tell it to erase this effect from my background. I want a more simplified process. So I'm going to delete this field layer because I don't need it anymore. Now I want to reduce the highlight on the face. That's the focus. Reducing the highlight on the face. Not the background, not the outfit, just the face. We're going to work on the skin. Remove all the blemishes in Capture One using AI features. But before we get to that, I have to treat the image and make sure the image is perfect enough so that by the time we get to that process, that's the final stage of our, our retouching, our image processing. Making it the last process just helps. So that's why I'm making sure I have my look dialed in before I now go back. So this is the look I want dialed in. This was before and after. What we now have in Capture 120 is the ability to select the skin of the face and treat it separately. So I'm just going, I will be working on the body and face, the body skin and face skin. Click on create mask. I will call it face highlights. What I want to do is to bring back the details in this highlight. So straight away, go to highlight and pull back the details. And I have my details pulled back. I can mix it around, use the highlight and also use curves because curves is a very good tool for pulling down highlights. So what, I, what you can see now is while I'm pulling the highlights, it's capturing everything. And that's where our luma range comes in. But what's great about the luma range, I'll toggle everything on. What's great about the Luma range now is that, just see, take a look at it. We have just the face selected. And when we go into our Luma range, unlike before where it selects the entire highlighted portion when we try to drag the range towards the highlight, it selects just the face that was selected. So it doesn't get confused. Some, In some cases, some some applications might get confused and start selecting the entire brightness of the image but this one is still focusing on the layer that it has created which was the skin layer that we now renamed face highlight the skin layer is all that it is focusing on while we adjust the loma range and that's amazing i'll apply the settings the settings show only on the face this was before when we had the highlights and now we've treated highlights if you want too much high more highlights that's it but you are you're controlling just that area of the face using the luma range now to brighten up the shadow areas of the face that's the same thing i would have done so with the previous method where you just use the luma range it will affect every area including the eyes and that was a problem for me in the past but now i i just want the skin you get and if i think of the eyes later on i can just paint it back in so this just makes it easier where you have only little or nothing at all to to mask manually so i'm going to create a new another people layer same face and skin face skin and body skin this time i want to approach the shadow area not like i need it much but i just want to be sure i'm in control of the highlights and the shadows again we go to the luma range we already know it's selected we can see it's selected and then we pull every the range to the shadow
I, for me, my preference, I like highlights. So I'm going to reduce it just to suit my own style. But at least we've not clipped it completely. I like it really blown out, but let's work with just a little. I'll work on skin color and I'll work on background color. I'll create a new body and face skin layer. With this mask selected, I would come to the skin tone and select the skin tone. You don't need a mask to work on skin tone, but I'm just doing it. Okay, with this mask selected, I would improve the overall look of the face. This is a global adjustment on the face. I'm going to brighten up her face, still reducing highlight details. Maybe this time around, I would include the lips and pupils and everything. So let's select a new layer to come, include pupil hair. Not hair, the lips, the eyebrows. I'll just select everything except the hair. So I've selected a mask to cover the face um, and then I brighten the face. I'll select a separate mask, one for the sclera and maybe another one for the pupil and iris separately. And if the effect is too much, you can still reduce the opacity. I want the sclera brightened more. So I'll brighten the sclera, reduce the saturation there, work on changing the color of the pupil. Let's make it blue. Then I would work on the lips as well. Create another layer just for the lips. I'll create a new field layer to adjust the colors of the skin. So with the new field layer selected, I'll go to skin tone under the color editor tab select the new skin tone and I'll shift my hue till it's warm enough for me desaturate till it's nice enough the skin tone selector actually picks everything that has the color of skin that's how it figures out what skin in an image it's different from a mask with a mask the mask is an AI tool that looks around the image and knows what is skin especially when under the people tool you tell it face skin and body skin it recognizes the skin there's a separate corner in capture 120 that's called retouch you go to the retouch section and it will figure out it will detect a face and if there are multiple faces it will detect the multiple faces and you can treat those faces individually now with this been recognized we can now reduce blemishes I will increase the blemish I will increase the dark circle and this AI feature in capture one will help us figure out what's blemish and also what's dark circle and just clean it out instantly all of this effect that we have added here is AI generated so I could copy this effect and paste it on a different similar image from the same shoot thank you for watching up to this point and if you've enjoyed this video hit the thumbs up button subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and I'll see you in the next one